Hey guys, my name is Joyce and welcome back to the Zcoin channel. Remember to like and comment and please subscribe to the Zcoin channel for more Zcoin information. So today's topic is all about Z nodes. And I know, what is Z nodes? And we'll get into that. But before we jump straight into that topic, we're going to recap and talk a little bit about mining. So with mining, there are two parts. First, you make a transaction. And second, you verify the transaction. With Zcoin, it uses something called a zero coin protocol. That means you can burn old coins in exchange for new ones with no transaction history. Zero coin transactions are also much larger than regular transactions. This results in accumulation of data in the blockchain. And what happens over time is a scaling problem because there is added cost to store all this data on the blockchain because you basically will need additional hard disk space. Plus, it takes a large amount of computational power. A regular transaction usually takes less than a millisecond to verify. However, with zero coin transactions, it can take up to half a second or even more. So this is where Z nodes come in. But wait, what's a node again? A node is a computer that stores all the transaction history of a coin. It also verifies that the transactions are valid. In Bitcoin, nodes are not paid anything, but they still have to host nodes to maintain operation. This is seen both in mining pools and exchanges. However, as time progresses, the cost in terms of data storage space goes up. Currently with Bitcoin, it costs about 150 gigs. And with Ethereum, which is relatively quite a new coin currency of about two years, it costs a whopping 100 gigabytes. The bigger the network and the more transactions it has, it costs even more to be a node. Do you want to dedicate potentially a hundred gigabyte of your computer's data for free? Nuh uh. Even the largest games take about maybe 30 plus gigs. And you have this coin application here that's potentially taking up a hundred gig of your computer's data. So, again, let me answer the question of what a Z node is. A Z node is kind of like a X Men version of a regular node. But currently, Z nodes still function much like a regular node, except they most likely will have better hardware and connectivity. Eventually, however, they will be the only nodes to process zero coin transactions, but they will still continue processing regular transactions. Z node kind of acts like a second layer. The Z node layer can keep up with a large amount of zero coin transactions without being choked up. So, then how do you qualify as a Z node? Well, first, you need a thousand Z coins to be deposited into the Z node holder's address. This is to act as a stake. It's important for investors to make sure they have a stake in the coin so they act in the best interest of the coin. This also prevents someone from spinning up thousands and thousands of nodes to cause a cyber attack. In many other currencies, only the miners get the block reward. But here now, the block reward is divided to those that help secure the network. And then the other part of it is dedicated to those that help maintain the network. So 30% of it goes to maintenance. That means Z nodes get 30% of the block reward. The block reward for nodes will remain at constant 30%. But the amount of returns you get is variable because there is a 20 to 30% interest per annum. The more nodes are online, the more you sort of have to share the reward. So you would just get less in return. This incentivizes people to have the necessary hardware and services to keep the network up and running, rather than relying on altruism. In the future, it's intended for Z nodes to be the only form of nodes to process zero coin transactions. This allows other regular nodes to have lower requirements and to just be lightweight. Also with Z nodes, a high percentage of nodes have to come to the same results to allow transactions to be processed. It uses something called a peer reputation management. I trust you, you trust me, we're a trusting family. In some other incentivized node system, like in Dash, there's a certain amount of trust that is needed to ensure the nodes are maintaining your privacy. Because in the process of mixing of transactions, they will have access to some of the information. With Z nodes, this isn't an issue because the use of zero knowledge proof means there's no mixing to be seen. The nodes are verifying mathematical proof to show that a person doing a zero coin spend transaction has done a valid zero coin min transaction without revealing which mint it is. Z nodes also do not affect the liquidity of Z coin. Even though you need a thousand Z coins to be a Z node, if let's say you really need to withdraw some of that coins, 
you can do so at any given time, just that you will go from a Z node back into a regular node and function as a regular node would. Now we're going to move on to frequently asked questions about Z nodes because I know you are dying to ask a million questions and I'm dying to answer them. What do you need to host a Z node? What happens if my Z node gets hacked? Do I lose all my funds? No, your Z node doesn't hold any funds. It merely has a marker that is a link to your account to ensure you have the prerequisite 1000 Z coins to be a Z node. If your Z node is hacked, all that really happens is that they can stop it and you might not get your payout. How much do I earn? Well, this is dependent on how many Z nodes there are out there in the network currently. The more nodes are on, the smaller your share of the Z node reward. Where do your Z nodes go and how often do you get payout? The Z nodes pay directly to your Z node address. Z nodes also operate on a queue system. Depending on how many nodes they are, it might take a couple of days. However, if it is your first time, the payout usually takes a little bit longer. What happens if my Z node goes offline? Do I lose my payout? There is a grace period for about an hour, and if you're not online within that hour, you will sort of lose your place in the queue and you sort of have to, you know, queue up all over again. Is it difficult to set up a Z node? It is not particularly difficult, but you do need some IT familiarity. There will be Z node operators that are available to set it up and keep it running for you, but it comes at a fee. And what happens if I don't have enough to host a Xenote? Well, several community members have offered services for Xenote pools or shared Xenotes. However, this would require a lot of trust because the person organizing this Xenote will have to be holding your funds. Only do this with people that you trust to maybe run away with your money or have the technical knowledge to keep your funds safe. If you do have more questions, feel free to leave a comment below and we'll make sure to get back to you. Bye! Thank you.